Hello and welcome. Um, I've got a few things to show you today. First of all, some new cells that I've built uh, since my last video. Uh, this first one uh, is stainless steel wire. Uh, it's one that I saw a little while ago in someone's car. Uh, not that great as far as I can tell. Um, it's basically two separate wires um, coiling around each other. So you've basically got one and then the other, one and then the other, just like you do in a cell. I find that the cable seems to get quite warm, especially where you have your connectors. Um, and yeah, I, I might show you how it works uh, on the next video, but not terribly great. Um, some other people might have had more luck with it. In fact, I'm sure they have, have, have had better luck with it than I have. Next one, um, just a bigger square cell. Um, I couldn't get this one really to work very well, so I have abandoned it for now. And then my latest one, which I just built yesterday, is a mini cell. Um, this is just rigged up, four plates, positive, negative, positive, negative. It's all right. Um, works quite well. I'll show you that one, but still doesn't come close really to the cells that I've been working with that being um, the one which is in this container here which we'll talk about in a sec and this basic square cell which um, I still haven't decided which configuration is the best for it as far as neutral plates and all that goes but um, for now just working with this larger plate which is in this container here which you have not seen before uh, I bought this container to use actually as a as a bubbler for this, um, but I've temporarily retrofitted it with a hose here and some cables, so that um, I can use it as a quick test tank because it's got a quick release lid, which makes it a lot easier than using bolts and stuff. Um, I will probably use it as a bubbler in the future. Obviously, the you know the gas will come in the bottom, bubble up through the top to keep it safe. Um, so I've got my larger cell wide in there at the moment and the test I want to do right now is a bubble test. Uh, now I've already done some bubble tests that you haven't seen but what I want to do now is start off with a low amperage and then um, slowly creep that amps up. Um, not so much to see uh, the performance of the cell but more to find out at what amperage it performs the best. So, for example, right now it's running uh, right on three amps, and I'm going to see how many milliliters that puts out in one minute, and then I'm going to up the amp slowly. In here, I've got a bit of electrolyte, and I'm just going to slowly add a bit of that in at a time, and find out what its optimal amperage is for running. See if there's any flat spots, you know. Um, for example. Once it gets to a certain amperage, say 15 amps, whether or not increasing amperage more than that makes really that much difference or not. These are things I'd like to know. So, that's bubbling out the hose now. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. I've got a stop watch here. I'm going to run that for a minute. And I'm going to see what we get. So, I'm going to start right now. Now what I'll probably do is fast forward this on the video. Okay, we're down to the five second mark. And that's it. Okay. Turn it off. Look at our watermark. And it is sitting right between 50 milliliters and 100 milliliters, milliliters just, just over halfway, so that's right on, what's that, 5, 6, 7, 8, 80 milliliters. So 80, 80 milliliters at 3 amps for this cell. So I'm going to write that down, and then I'm going to add a bit more electrolyte, and um, test it again. Okay, so I've added a bit more electrolyte, and we are now running... Right on five amps. She's bubbling away. 
stopwatch here. I'm going to start that now. Okay, last five seconds. And that's it. Turn it off. And that is about 120 milliliters. Yep, 120 milliliters at 5 amps. So I'll do the same thing again and uh, increase the electrolyte and see what we get. Okay, now she's running at 8 amps, just a tiny bit over 8 amps. So I'm going to do that again, starting from now. Okay, nearly there. And that's it. Turn it off. Okay, so 8 amps, just over. And we're sitting right on 200 milliliters. Yeah, smack on 200 milliliters. So I'll write that down and go again. Okay, just upped it again. We are now running at just over 12 amps. Call it 12 and a half amps. You can really see it bubbling out now. So I'm going to get that ready and start. Okay, nearly there. And time. Turn it off. Alright. What are we looking at here? That is. Nearly 300 milliliters. Um, that would be 280. 280 milliliters. Okay, we're now running on uh, about 16 and a half amps. Yep, just shy of 17 amps. You can see it bubbling out quite a lot, as you would imagine it to, that kind of amps. So I'm going to start the test now. This is the point at which my connectors, um, especially down here, Allen clip connectors, start to get quite hot. Um, obviously they're just a temporary thing. I'd have to be running a lot heavier duty cables and connectors if I had this in a permanent setup. But as I said before, it's just for convenience at the moment. Okay, nearly there. It's sitting on Sixteen and a half amps, and that's it. So sixteen and a half amps gave us exactly four hundred milliliters. Okay, so I've put our data into a grid here. Across the bottom, we've got our different amps, and here we've got milliliters. Uh, I don't know if you can see this line running straight through here. That's a straight line. And all of them, the first four, seem to be sitting right on that same line. This last one is performing a bit better. So that's some interesting stuff that um, I'll have to think about a bit more. Till then, see you later.